channel. It's everyone's favorite time of the month again. Time to discuss some brand new horror and thriller book releases. Now there are 17 books in this video that I want you to know about. There are about three debut novels, some YA novels, and without further ado, let's just get right into it because I don't want to do a 30 plus minute video and you don't want to sit through that either. So before we get into it, there are two book releases that I need to tell you have been postponed. You probably already know about them, but they were probably two of the most anticipated book releases for 2022. The first one is going to be Grady Hendrix's How to Sell a Haunted House. This was originally supposed to come out on July 12th, but it has now been postponed to January 17th, 2023. Now the second book that has been postponed is Stephen Graham Jones's Don't Fear the Reaper, which was initially supposed to be released on July 26th, but it has now been pushed even farther out to February 7th, 2023. So these first three books all came out on July 5th. The first one is not exactly horror, I don't think, but let's not judge this book by its cover. This is called Florida Woman by Deb Rogers. It is about 352 pages and comes from Hanover Square Press. So this is a story about a Florida woman named Jamie who's grown up on the beaches and thrives in the humidity and she has weathered more hurricanes than she can count. But when the chance comes for her to escape viral infamy and imminent jail time by taking a community service placement at Atlas, a shelter for rescued monkeys, it seems like just the start, Jamie needs to finally get her life back on track. But something sinister stirs in the palmetto woods surrounding her cabin, and secrets lurk among the three women who run the shelter and take Jamie under their wing for the summer. She hears the distant screams of monkeys each night. The staff perform cryptic lakeside sacrifices to honor Atlas, and the land which has long been abandoned by citrus farmers and theme park developers alike now proves to be dangerously, relentlessly untamed. As Jamie ventures deeper into the offbeat world and rituals of Atlas, her summer is soon set to inspire an even stranger Florida headline than she ever could have imagined. The next one that came out on July 5th is called The Paul Bearers Club by Paul Tremblay. It is 288 pages and comes from William Morrow. So back in the 1980s, there was this high school loner named Art Barbara. He was 17 years old and had a lot of medical problems. But he started an extracurricular club for volunteer pallbearers at poorly attended funerals. His new friend thought the pallbearers club was cool and she brought along her Polaroid camera to take pictures of the corpses. Okay, that part was a little weird. So was her obsessive knowledge of a notorious bit of New England folklore that involved digging up the dead. And there were other strange things, terrifying things, that happened when she was around, usually at night, but she was his friend, so she was okay, right? Decades later, Art tries to make sense of it all by writing The Paul Bears Club a memoir, but somehow this friend got her hands on the manuscript and she has some issues with it. And now she's making cuts. The last book that came out on July 5th is called Frightmares by Eva V. Gibson. It is 288 pages long and comes from Underlined. Dave is spending his final summer before college working at Frightmare's House of Horrors, a struggling haunted house attraction held together by malfunctioning killer clown mannequins, a cheap replica Annabelle doll, and a lot of improvising. After a particularly disastrous shift ends in an employee walkout, Dave reluctantly takes over a role for his friend. However, he makes a horrifying discovery, a real dead body hidden on set. But when Dave returns with help, the body is gone. Though the killer covered their tracks, Dave realizes they must know what he saw. Could he be their next target? There was one book that came out on July 8th. It is called Ghost Flowers by Russ Warnham, and it is 452 pages. 
So it's the weekend of July 4th in 1971. Everybody is celebrating by cooking hot dogs and hamburgers and doing all the fun summer July 4th things. But the night is also filled with screams when a girl's body is found, her throat torn out by savage teeth. Summer Moore is a waitress at the Dixie Dinette. 20, blonde and beautiful, Summer desperately needs to break free from her mother's constant nagging and the dull monotony of life in the small mountain town of Stonebridge, Virginia. There's also a mysterious drifter that comes into town. His buddies in Nam called him the Midnight Rider. Traeger's the name on his army jacket, but a dark shadow of the unknown hangs over this Vietnam vet as he rides into town on a night black Electra Glide called on a quest that's tainted by blood. Sheriff Buddy Hicks doesn't like hippies in his town, especially not long-haired hippie bikers. As soon as the sheriff saw him, he knew the biker was trouble. Now something feels different in Stonebridge, something he doesn't understand, and he's not going to put up with radicals in his town. There are secrets in the woods. Ben Castle, who summoned the biker with a note scrawled in blood, Louise Moore, who refuses to lose control of her daughter like she lost her husband. Summer and the biker locked in a dance, an embrace of shadows that has lasted for centuries. And even the mountains themselves hold secrets. It's a death dance in the moonlight. Ghost flowers a love story with blood. So there are four books that came out on July 12th. The first one is called Classic Monsters Unleashed. It is a multi-authored anthology featuring stories of famous monsters in a new horror anthology edited by James Acleon and featuring Joe R. Lansdale, F. Paul Wilson, Jonathan Mayberry, Ramsey Campbell, and many others. So in this collection, you will find tales revolving around Dracula and Frankenstein's monster, the Bride of Frankenstein, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Dr. Moreau, the Headless Horseman, the Invisible Man, the Phantom of the Opera, the Wicked Witch of the West. They're all here in this collection of short stories that reimagine, subvert, and pay homage to our favorite monsters and creatures. This next one is called The Ghost That Ate Us by Daniel Krauss. It is 302 pages long and comes from Raw Dog Screaming Press. Maybe you read about it on Twitter. Maybe a friend sent you a news clip. Maybe you saw it on an episode of Spectral Journeys that night you were flipping through channels unable to sleep. Maybe after reading the true story, you will never sleep again. On June 1st, 2017, six people were killed at a Burger City franchise off I-80 near Johnny, Iowa. It was the bizarre and gruesome conclusion to nine months of alleged paranormal activity at the fast food joint, events popularly known as the Burger City Poltergeist. The story inspired Facebook memes, Twitter hashtags, BuzzFeed, listicles, Saturday Night Live sketches, and more. But the case was never much more than a punchline until best-selling writer Daniel Krauss decided to head to Iowa to dig up what really happened. Presented here is the definitive story of the most exhaustively documented haunting in history, including for the first time ever, interviews with every living survivor of the tragedy. The employees of Burger City were a family. They loved one another, at least at the beginning, but love can make you do unspeakable things. Next, we have a thriller. It is called We Lie Here by Rachel Hazel Hall. It is 416 pages long and comes from Thomas and Mercer. TV writer Yara Gibson's hometown of Palmdale, California isn't her first choice for a vacation, but she's back to host her parents' 20th anniversary party and find the perfect family mementos for the celebration. Everything is going to plan until Yara receives a disturbing text. I have information that will change your life. The message is from Felicia Campbell, who claims to be a childhood friend of Yara's mother, but they've been estranged for years drama best ignored and forgotten, but Yara can't forget Felicia, who keeps texting, insisting that Yara talk to her before it's too late. But the next day is already too late for Felicia, whose body is found floating in Lake Palmsdale. Before she died, Felicia left Yara a key to a remote lakeside cabin. In the basement are files related to a mysterious tragedy unsolved since 1998. What secrets was Felicia hiding? 
How much of what Yara knows about her family has been true? The deeper Yara digs for answers, the more she fears that Felicia was right. Uncovering the truth about what happened at the cabin all those years ago will change Yara's life or end it. Next up, we have What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher. It is 176 pages long and comes from Toward Nightfire. This is a reimagining of Edgar Allan Poe's classic, The Fall of the House of Usher. So when Alex Easton, a retired soldier, receives word that their childhood friend Madeline Usher is dying, they race to the ancestral home of the Ushers in the remote countryside of Ruritania. But what they find there is a nightmare of fungal growths and possessed wildlife surrounding a dark pulsing lake. Madeline sleepwalks and speaks in strange voices at night, and her brother Roderick is consumed with the mysterious malady of the nerves. Aided by a redoubtable British mycologist and a baffled American doctor, Alex must unravel the secret of the House of Usher before it consumes them all. So there are six books coming out on July 19th. So get those <laughs> credit cards ready because you're going to need it. The first one is called Black Mouth by Ronald Malfi. It is 400 pages and comes from Titan Books. For nearly two decades, Jamie Warren has been running from darkness. He's haunted by a traumatic childhood and the guilt at having disappeared from his disabled brother's life. But then a series of unusual events reunites him with his estranged brother and their childhood friends, and none of them can deny the sense of fate that has seemingly drawn them back together. Nor can they deny the memories of that summer so long ago, the strange magic taught to them by an even stranger man, and the terrible act that has followed them all into adulthood. In the light of new danger, they must confront their past by facing their futures and hunting down a man who may very well be a monster. Next, we have The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. It's 320 pages and comes from Del Rey Books. So this is a reimagining of the island of Dr. Moreau set against the backdrop of 19th century Mexico. Carlotta Moreau, a young woman growing up in a distant and luxuriant estate safe from the conflict and strife of the Yucatan Peninsula, is the only daughter of either a genius or a madman. Montgomery Lawton, a melancholic overseer with a tragic past and a propensity for alcohol, an outcast who assists Dr. Moreau with his scientific experiments, which are financed by the Lizaldes, owners of magnificent haciendas and plentiful coffers, the hybrids, the fruits of the doctor's labor, destined to blindly obey their creator and remain in the shadows, a motley group of part human, part animal monstrosities. All of them living in a perfectly balanced and static world, which is jolted by the abrupt arrival of Edward Lizalde, the charming and careless son of Dr. Moreau's patron, who will unwittingly begin a dangerous chain reaction. For Moreau keeps secrets, Carlotta has questions, and in the sweltering heat of the jungle, passions may ignite. Next up, we have Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. It's 352 pages long and comes from Tor Books. Come home. Vera's mother called and Vera obeyed. In spite of their long estrangement, in spite of the memories, she's come back to the home of a serial killer, back to face the love she had for her father and the bodies he buried there. Coming home is hard enough for Vera, and to make things worse, she and her mother aren't alone. A parasitic artist has moved into the guest house out back, and is slowly stripping Vera's childhood for spare parts. He insists that he isn't the one leaving notes around the house in her father's handwriting, but who else could it possibly be? There are secrets yet undiscovered in the foundations of the notorious Crowder House. Vera must face them and find out for herself just how deep the rot goes. The Last Storm by Tim Levin is 368 pages long, and I'm not sure who the publisher is, but this is a post-apocalyptic dystopian story uh, where most of the United States is like a desert now, 
there's a man named Jesse who stopped rain making the moment his abilities became deadly, which brought down not just rain, but scorpions, strange snakes, and spiders. He thought he could help a land suffering from climate catastrophe, but he was wrong. When his daughter, Ash, inherited the tainted gift, carried down the family bloodline, Jesse did his best to stop her. His attempt went tragically wrong, and ever since then, he has believed himself responsible for his daughter's death. But now his wife, Karina, who never gave up looking for their daughter, brings news that Ash is still alive, and she's rainmaking again. Terrified of what she might bring down upon the desperate communities of the desert, the estranged couple set out across the desolate landscape to find her. But Jesse and Karina are not the only ones looking for Ash. As the storms she conjures become more violent and deadly, some follow her seeking hope, and one is hungry for revenge. Next is Mary, An Awakening of Terror by Nat Cassidy. It is 416 pages long from Tor Nightfire. So Mary is a quiet middle-aged woman doing her best to blend into the background. She's unremarkable, invisible, unknown even to herself. But lately, things have been changing inside Mary. Along with the hot flashes and body aches, she can't look in a mirror without passing out, and the voices in her head have been urging her to do unspeakable things. Fired from her job in New York, she moves back to her hometown, hoping to reconnect with her past and inner self. Instead, visions of terrifying, mutilated specters overwhelm her with increasing regularity, and she begins auto-writing strange thoughts and phrases. Mary discovers that these experiences are echoes of an infamous serial killer. Then the killings begin again. Mary's definitely going to find herself. The last one on July 19th is We Will Rise by Tim Wagner. It's 288 pages from Flame Tree Press. In Echo Hill, Ohio, the dead begin to reappear, manifesting in various forms, from classic ghosts and poltergeists to physical undead and bizarre apparitions for which there is no name. These spirits attack the living, tormenting and ultimately killing them in order to add more recruits to their spectral ranks. A group of survivors come together after the initial attack, all plagued by different ghostly apparitions of their own. Can they make it out of Echo Hill alive, and if so, will they still be sane? Or will they die and join the ranks of the vengeful dead? These last three books all come out on July 26th. The first one is Into the Sublime by Kate A. Borman. It's 368 pages from Henry Holton Company. When the cops arrive, only a few things are clear. Four girls entered a dangerous cave. Three of them came out alive. Two of them were rushed to the hospital, and one is soaked in blood and ready to talk. So four girls from a now-defunct, thrill-seeking group planned an epic adventure to find a lake that Colorado locals call the Sublime. Legend has it that the lake has the power to change things for those who risk its cavernous depths. They each had their reasons for going. For Amelie, it was a promise kept to her beloved cousin who's recently suffered a tragic accident during one of the group's dares. But as her account unwinds and the girls' personalities and motives are drawn, things get complicated. Amelie is hardly the thrill-seeking type, and it appears she's not the only one with the ability to deceive. Worse yet, Amelie is covered in someone's blood, but who's exactly? And where's the fourth girl? Is Amelie spinning a tail to cover her guilt, or was something inexplicably waiting for the girls down there? Amelie's the only one with answers, and she's insisting on an explanation that is more horror fantasy than reality. Maybe the truth lies somewhere in between. Next we have Old Country by Matt and Harrison Query. It is 320 pages from Grand Central Publishing. It's the house of their dreams. Former Marine Harry and his wife Sasha has packed up their life and their golden retriever Dash and fled the corporate rat race to live off the land in rural Idaho. But they soon learn from their new neighbors that a malevolent spirit lives in the valley, one that with every season will haunt them in fresh, ever more diabolical ways. At first, it seems like an old wives' tale, but when spring arrives, so does the first evil manifestation challenging everything Harry and Sasha thought they knew about the world. 
As each season passes, the spirit grows stronger, the land more sinister, and each encounter more dangerous. Will Harry and Sasha learn the true meaning of a forever home before it's too late? Last we have The Witchery by S. Isabel. It's 384 pages from Scholastic. Halesford, Florida is a hellmouth, or at least that's what Logan, a baby witch struggling to control her powers, thinks as she arrives to the witch town to begin the new school year at Mesmortes Coven Academy. She is immediately taken under the wing of the infamous Red Three. Iris is a death witch who wants nothing more than to break the town's curse. Jalia is one of the most powerful witches at the academy, but her thirst for power may lead her down a dark path. And Thalia, the talented green witch, is on the run from her religious family and a past that still haunts her. Fear and prejudice still fuel the uneasy truce between humans and witches who are forced to work together when the haunting season begins and wolves rise from the swamp to feed. With this approaching, two Hammersmith boys prepare to make their first sacrifices to the witches in exchange for protection. But as they become involved with the Mesmortes witches' plan to end the wolves' reign of terror once and for all, old dangers lie in wait. The cost to break the curse may be greater than any witch or human could ever know. Ooh, that was a mouthful. 17 horror and thriller books coming out in July. I think this is the most releases for any month this year, at least any that I've done. A lot of these sound really cool. Really look forward to checking some of them out at some point. Which one of these have you read already? Which are all your TBR? And which ones have I given you ideas for? I would love to know that especially. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one.